Hey, I'm Dominic Reisig, Extension Specialist in Field Crops, Department of Entomology and Plant Pathology at North Carolina State University. I want to talk a little bit about mid-season insect scouting today. When we sample soybeans, we have two tools we want to use. The first is the sweep net. You can use it in any row spacing, but it's kind of the only option once your rows get below 30 inches. The other sampling we can tool we can use is a, a drop cloth like you see here. Now this is a better sampling tool because it allows you to get a more accurate representation of what's actually in the field. So if you've got wide row spacings, anything above 30 inches, this is something you can use to find the insects that are there. Uh, different insects prefer different portions of the canopy. So for example, soybean loopers prefer to be lower in the canopy. So if you're using a sweep net, got to make sure you're getting down into that canopy to find those loopers. Uh, things like earworms are kind of found throughout the canopy. And so the sweep net or the drop cloth is probably going to be equally effective to find those. And the same thing holds true for stink bugs. So there's a number of different insects you'll pick up mid-season. As, as time goes on, as we get farther into the fall, we start picking corn, some of the beans go out. Uh, these things really become green islands. So corn earworms can vary in coloration. They can be green, they can be brown, but generally when you find them on a drop cloth, they'll be curled up into a C shape. They're really not very mobile and they're, they're pretty hairy. Those are the characteristics I look for. Some farmers like to watch the moon to tell if they need to spray for corn earworm. Some farmers like to ride down the field path and see how many moths fly over their truck. But neither one of these are accurate indicators that you need to spray for corn earworm. The best way to tell is to get out and walk your field and do some scouting and then come back and plug that information into the threshold calculator on the soybean portal because it may actually cost more for you to spray for the corn earworms than it would be to let them live. There's a number of different armyworm species that you can find. They also vary in color. The bodies are tip, tend, tend to be smooth. And then you may see two different kinds of insects that move in a looping motion. One of them is the green clover worm and the other is the soybean looper. Really important to tell these two apart because the soybean looper can be a very voracious feeder, the green clover worm not so much. What I like to do is to count their fake legs on the bottom. I say fake legs because insects have six legs. On caterpillars, all those legs are up front. Those fake legs are, are towards the, the, the back. We call them pro legs. If you count three pro legs plus one at the back, you know that's a green clover worm. If you count two pro legs plus one at the back, that's a soybean looper. Now, soybean loopers are pretty voracious foliage feeders. They won't eat pods like corn earworms. So it's really something we have to watch out for, especially as we get into September, to make sure that we have adequate canopy to fill those pods out. There's a few other things we need to watch out for mid-season. One of them is stink bugs. Now, stink bugs become even more problematic as, as time goes on, and they're seed feeders. So we really only have to worry about stink bugs once we hit into those R R4, R5, and R6 stages. We still need to manage them through R7, because even though they may not cause much yield loss, they can still suck nutrients out of that plant, and sometimes we can get that stay green syndrome. All right, so if you're looking for stink bugs, and you go out with your sweep net, and you find five stink bugs per 15 sweeps, that's when you're gonna need to spray. If you go out there with your beet cloth, and you find one stink bug per foot of row, that's when the threshold is triggered with the beet cloth. Now these thresholds will be cut in half if you're growing seed beans. So make sure that you look for stink bugs, those things that are feeding on these pods when you're doing your sweep net and drop cloth samples. It's important to know what kind of insects you have in your field so you can choose the right control method if it's needed. So insects like bean leaf beetles, Japanese beetles, soybean loopers, green clover worms, all of those feed on foliage. So our thresholds for defoliating insects is a 30% defoliation pre-bloom, and then once those beans start to bloom, the threshold is gonna go down to 15%. To assess defoliation, you need to look throughout the canopy because some of these insects feed in different parts of the canopy. What I like to do is grab a trifoliate from the top, grab a trifoliate from the middle, and grab a fully formed trifoliate from the bottom of the plant. So what I'll do is I'll throw out the least damaged leaflet, I'll throw out the most damaged leaflet, and I'll take an average of this leaflet here, and I'll do the same for all these leaves in different parts of the canopy. This is much less than 5% defoliation. If all these leaves turn out to be the same, we've got a representative sample of the field, 
that will give us a good feeling that we don't have to spray this field for defoliators. So remember when you sample soybeans, you need to use the tools to apply our thresholds correctly. If you have any questions about anything we've talked about in this video, you can visit the soybean portal online or contact your county extension agent.